Okay. <coughs> okay, I uh, just want to read one verse and then we'll pray. Right? Um, in First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5, Paul says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and uh, um, in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Right? For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Okay, so um, here Paul is saying that the, the gospel which uh, they preached, uh, it, it, it came along with certain other things. It was not just uh, the communication of an idea, right? It was not just a sharing of a thought or an idea, but it came with much assurance it came in the power of the Holy Spirit. So it power, Holy Spirit, assurance, and life example. He says, for you know what kind of men we were among you. So uh, this is a reminder for us, you know, when, when we minister or particularly when we share the gospel, that it is not just the words, it's not just the truth um, that we are, you know, uh, sharing, but it is, the truth is shared, accompanying all this, right? It is, uh, it is shared in with power. It is shared in the Holy Spirit, meaning by the assurance and uh, presence of the Holy Spirit. It is shared with much assurance, you know, as a witness to our heart, as a, uh, you know, uh, as a weighty testimony in our own hearts, and importantly, the life example. So Paul says, you know, you know what kind of men we were among you right so so let's pray and let's um uh, let's ask the lord to give us insight into this and also let's let's pray and commit ourselves that when we share and when we minister it'll be the same way right it'll not just be mere words but it'll be with power it, it'll be in the holy spirit and uh, it'll be with um, much assurance of heart and also um, that our life will speak right father we thank you we thank you for this truth, O oh God, that uh, this is how the gospel was preached. And Lord, today, Lord, this is how you would you would like the gospel to be preached. And Father God, we commit each one of us into your mighty hands as we share, Lord, and even as you've called us to share, as we minister, even as you called and uh, assigned each one of us the ministry. Lord, we, we pray and we ask, O oh Father God, that um, when we minister, Lord, it will be with power. Lord, it will not be lacking in power, Lord. Whatever we are declaring, Father God, whether it's, uh, Lord, uh, um, Lord, uh, breaking away from sin, or breaking away from a sinful lifestyle, whether it's, uh, Lord, strongholds being broken, addictive behavior being broken, a life transformation, or, God, with the need for healing, deliverance, Lord, uh, change lives. Father God, I pray that the gospel will accompany, Lord, the ministry, sharing of the gospel. But each one of us will accompany the signs and wonders and the power, Lord. And also, God, that uh, it will be in the presence and power of your spirit, O Master, that people will experience and, in, and have an encounter, Lord, with you, Master. And we also pray for, Lord, that it will come with the assurance, Lord, much assurance, and and also god that even as we share it will be with our lives will speak louder our lives will speak lord and testify louder lord and uh, yes father god we pray for many to be saved many to be brought into your kingdom we thank you we give you all the praise and glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen, amen. okay so let's um let's continue we stopped at uh, uh, Colossians 2 and verse 17, right? Paul, uh, right before that, is talking about how we were all circumcised. You know, the Gentile believers were also circumcised by a kind of a circumcision not made with hands, which means it was not a natural work or a physical work, but it was a spiritual work and the circumcision of the heart, right? So he's talking about sin being taken away uh, because of the Lord's 
uh, death on the cross and he also talks about uh, you know how the lord disarmed principalities and powers and uh, he made a you know public show of them he shamed them in public and uh, and also uh, he, he 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 was victorious in what he did right? he triumphed over them so that was verse 15 so in verse 16 paul says so because the lord jesus did all this on the cross for our sakes did because the lord jesus delivered us from sin because the lord jesus forgave us our trespasses right and uh, he made a public spectacle of all the demons and the powers of darkness let no one judge you in food or drink okay? he's specifically talking about you know the the jewish way ceremonial ways ceremonial laws um that they were following till then okay and uh, paul being a uh, being a trained pharisee himself you now he, uh, he has encountered the grace of god and he has encountered the truth of uh, uh, god's grace and his life has changed you know he was a very strict pharisee he had kept the laws kept the fees and in fact he himself says that according to the law um you know as a jewish person he was blameless right so he had uh, um you know he had uh, he had walked that way but now he had experienced freedom so now he's saying you know this is the reality of what christ did for us on the cross so let no one judge you in food or drink you know if there is anyone coming and you know teaching you or ministering and saying hey, you on this day you need to eat this or uh, on this day you need to observe these things you know it is uh, it is it is not so right let no one do that give them no permission to do that right so um all these feasts and all these observe uh, observations are a shadow meaning you know when does a shadow fall right if there is something an, an object real object and there is light right and there is a shadow right so which means the real object uh, the shadow is actually pointing to the fact that hey there is a real object there is actually a real object and there is light falling on that object because of which there is a shadow so it's saying these things are all shadows but the substance the real thing is of christ and now christ has come you have experienced christ so there's no need for you to follow what is the shadow right so saying uh, which is what is verse 17 which are a shadow of things to come but the substance is of christ okay verse 18 let no one cheat you of your reward taking delight in false humility and worship of angels intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from god okay so he's saying let no one no one cheat you of your reward you know to the through their ministry or the to their teaching let no one cheat you of your reward which means that you know all these laws and all these things that you want to keep and rules and guidelines uh, you know according to the uh, customs of man and also according to the jewish customs you know if you're going to keep that then believe me that you're going to depart from the tr- truth right go away from the truth so let no one cheat you of your reward okay um and then he says that um uh let no one cheat you taking delight you know how are they going to cheat you of the reward taking delight in false humility okay? false humility and worship of angels okay so totally unscriptural practices uh angels are ministering spirits and um, created beings um whom the lord uses to minister to uh human beings right he either sends messages like we see in the gospels that uh, the angel gabriel came with the message of uh, the messiah to be born right uh met with zachariah met with uh, mary um so with a message right so we have angels bearing messages we have angels um, you know who are warring angels and so on but they are not to be worshiped right so he's saying here that um, um 
let no one cheat you by teaching you this you know teaching you things that they are to be worshiped teaching you about false humility okay um, like it is going to make you a little you know more humble you know if you let's say if you uh, you know the previous thing what he says is about uh, food or drink or you know a festival and all that so if you're going to do this then it's going to you know it, it, you are more spiritual right you are uh, you know you are going to be walk hum- walking humbly you know that so that's that's actually false humility right so that's not the real thing that's false humility so he's saying it's vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind so it's actually not the truth and it's not spiritual but it's actually fleshly right so um it is fleshly in the sense it's carnal a mind that is carnal so it's vainly puffed up by maybe imagination so vainly puffed up by uh, lies okay so he's saying uh, puffed up by his fleshly mind okay then um verse 19 what is it not holding to the head so this is what that person is you know who's teaching about false humility or teaching things that are false they're not holding on to the head who is the head the head is christ right not holding on to the head um and uh, from whom all the body is nourished and knit together right the body of christ the body of believers are nourished and strengthened which means they are fed by christ right so he is the way the truth and the life uh he is um you know he, the words that comes from him they are they are spirit and life the, the lord jesus himself said man cannot live by bread alone by physical bread but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god meaning that god's word is spirit and life and its nourishment and strength so um so he's saying you know this is a person who's not holding fast who's not got a strong grip on the lord jesus he's not holding to the head but um uh, you know by whom the whole body you know because the nourishment comes from the body and uh, joints and ligaments and everything are knit together and and it causes increase of the body uh, grows from the increase that comes from god now if such a person who's is not holding on to the head then there is that person is not growing that person is not nourished so whatever that person is saying or teaching or ministering you know that is lacking in truth lacking in power so he says you know uh, let no one cheat you again of that reward okay verse 20 therefore if you died with christ from the basic principles of the world as though why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations okay do not touch do not taste do not handle which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men okay so it's very a uh, very plain and simple saying if you died with christ you know that your old man died with christ so you died with christ so why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to these things again he's talking about the new covenant he's talking about the new birth and so the old things are passed away right so why do you subject yourself to you know when he's when he's talking about you know do not touch do not taste do not handle he's talking about the uh, the religious uh, you know the, the ceremonial laws and, and the religious customs right so he's saying which concern things which perish with the using right whether it's a matter of eating or whether it's a matter of um, you know doing things in a certain way these are these are perishable things Right? these are earthly things these are perishable things right and uh, you you're doing it according to the commandments and doctrines of men right verse um, 23 these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom you know let's say for example you know there is a suppose they say you know there is a teaching and they're saying you know you need to stay off a certain kind of food for so many weeks okay why it's not for health reason or anything but it's you know it it is supposed to make you more spiritual you know or whatever so uh, or you know you observe certain days you know, every monday you need to do this uh, every monday you know or tuesday you do do this and then you know that results in your prayers being answered or things like that right 
so these have an appearance of wisdom you know if you but uh a wisdom in self imposed religion and false humility again it's self imposed you know you, did, did god suggest that no okay it's self which means i myself or you know man okay self imposed religion or false humility humility sorry and neglect of the body but these are of no value these are useless and these are not um, you know these are worthless no value worthless against the indulgence of the flesh okay so when it comes to living a victorious life which requires the power of the spirit or uh, and the power of the word of god like these kind of fleshly uh, humanistic doctrines they cannot you know they cannot help you to overcome the flesh right saying they are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh um, which means that if a person is struggling in sin if a person is struggling in you know uh, any of these addictions it has no value it is does not give that person the power to overcome right so um so paul is uh, making it very clear that you know this is the new covenant new dispensation therefore live uh, free you know live with the liberty of the spirit okay um so he, he's saying you know christ has done all this on the cross so therefore why do you go back why do you go back to the law so um from this we understand that uh, yes you know there are people who've been you know going about spreading some uh, wrong teaching in the in the churches and uh, so he's paul is really concerned about the church in colosse that some of them would you know slip away right okay so let's move on to us uh, sorry chapter 3 right if then you were raised with christ seeking those seek those things which are above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god set your mind on things above not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory therefore put to death your members which are on the earth fornication uncleanness passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry because of these things the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of uh, uh, disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your mouth okay, so we we'll, we'll look at those verses so he's say, he's saying you know if then you were raised with christ seek those things which are above seek the you know the the, the kingdom of god seek the spiritual things um you know that doesn't uh, mean that you you neglect you know your responsibilities or earthly responsibilities or earthly duties you know um so he doesn't he doesn't talk about that because in other places we see that you know if somebody does not provide for the needs of the family and does not you know take care of them he's worse than an unbeliever you know he does not work with his hands and you know, you know he's not doing that then he's worse than an unbeliever right so so here uh, paul is not referring to you know he's he's not saying that you should not do anything right but he's saying you you seek those things let your first and foremost uh, you give the, that the importance to seek those things that are above okay set your mind on things above and not uh, and, and not things on the earth so um so is uh, you know is is using a set your mind on another translation says set your affection on things that are above okay so uh, to me which me i mean to, which means that uh, um when it comes to exercising your mind or making a choice or uh, you know or even uh, some kind of a opinion let it be on things that are above you know, the decisions that you make the choices that you make uh, 
um, the opinions that you might you know come to conclude right let let it be on let it fixed on things above and not on earthly things you know you're, you're giving importance your focus let it be uh, about the kingdom of god okay and the reason is this for you died and your life is hidden with christ okay so which means he's in other words he's saying you died and you're living right you died uh, but you are living okay so what does he mean he's talking about something that died something that was nailed on the cross right something that died along with christ and he died and how you and i rose again when he was uh, when he rose again right so for the believer well the old the past the body of sin that is taken away or that is dead right it's it's no more you know it's it's a it's a closed chapter right so he's saying you know therefore uh i'm sorry if you died and your life is hidden with christ and your life that the life that you live um physical life and and also the 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 life that you have you know, it's hidden with christ in the sense it's 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 christ who's is covering everything right christ is the lord jesus is covering everything uh and this life that you live he's covering everything so this life is hidden your life is hidden with christ in god okay um verse 4 when christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory so he's um is talking about the reality of the of the second coming and uh, and the reality of what will happen when he comes and uh, he's pointing to that right uh, the the importance of that okay uh, let me just uh, share the notes here okay right so so paul is saying you know for you died um your old man died your old creation died uh therefore um you will also appear with him you know your life is hidden with christ and god so when christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory so when you physically when you pass away you will also appear with him in glory okay now verse 5 is important you know is leading up to verse 5 okay so he's saying set your mind on things above right not on things on the earth you died and your life is hidden with christ right um verse 1 it says if you, if then you were raised with christ seek those things which are above so he's saying you know you died in christ you were raised with christ you know uh so set your mind on things above where christ is um so verse 5 therefore because of all these things oh, that's what it means right therefore it means because of all these things because of all these things that have happened to you because of this truth put to death your members which are on the earth put to death so what are we to put to death you know it's talking about your members is talking about the works of the flesh which we give ourselves to okay um which a carnal believer which a believer who's not yielded to god gives himself or herself to right so saying um put to death your members okay so bring to an end so oh, that's what death is right so death is uh, you know bringing to an end you know the other old english is mean mortify mortify your members okay put to death your members so literally saying you know put to death the parts of your body that are 
that are not submitted or you know which are which you you which are you know indulging in the acts of flesh fleshly acts so he's saying you know put to death mortify right um so the thing that we see is that you yourselves you know therefore put to death your members which are on the earth you put to death you're responsible he's talking about then he lists down he's talking about fornication uncleanness passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry so covetousness is just idolatry and he's talking about other things so the thing is that when it comes to covetousness you're wanting something and that wanting is so strong that uh, you want something for yourself and that replaces god in your life right that replaces god that substitutes god in your life so he's saying you know covetousness is actually idolatry you know idolatry which means that uh, yeah you don't have god you have something else as your god uh, it could be you know not necessarily a um, a physical you know here he's not talking about a physical idol right he's talking about desires he's talking about uh, you know maybe certain practices um he's talking about those that substitute that are substitutes for god okay so he's saying um which is covet you know when it, and it's covetousness when you're eagerly you know l- lusting after something and saying okay i want that i want this uh he's saying that is idolatry right it replaces god in your life substitutes god in your life and because of these things you know because people are walking in fornication and uncleanness and lawlessness and evil desire and just giving themselves over to the appetites of the flesh and 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 idolatry because of these things this is verse 6 the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience you know those who do not know christ the wrath of god is coming upon them uh in what in which you once walked according yeah, you know you once walked when you lived in them so saying you know this is how you live but i just want to remind you that the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience right so there's no point in you going back and living such lives okay um but now verse 8 you yourselves are to put off all these okay so he's saying this you yourself have to bring to an end put, bring to you know earlier he said you need to put to death okay so you yourselves are to bring to an end all these things okay um so what are those things um um just one second sorry um okay so he's saying okay put off all these what are that uh, there's another list you know anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your mouth you know put off all these things right um uh, just one second no? um just excuse me for a minute i'll just close so yeah so you yourself have to put off all these things and what are those things he's saying you know anger malice wrath blasphemy filthy language do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds okay that's verse 9 so verse, so you need to put off these things in your life um you know if these things are there you need to put it off if this cannot continue in your life you're a believer now so you you need to deal with these things anger whether it's anger or wrath or malice malice you know intentionally hurting planning and hurting others uh, blasphemy you know saying things against god 
um, uh, filthy language, you know, language that is unedifying, language that is, uh, uh, you know, using, uh, you know, bad language, bad words. So he's saying, you need to put it out of your mouth. You know, it cannot be there with you. Uh, verse 9, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Okay, so this is what has happened. You died in Christ and now you are alive in Christ. Right? You died in Christ. You have put off the old man. The old person is no more. Since the old person is no more, why do you lie to one another? Okay, that is something. Lying and cheating and Anger, it, it, these are qualities of the old man, right? of the old person, of the old creation, of the fallen creation. So um, since you have put off the old man, um, don't lie to one another. Okay? Do not lie to one another. Okay? Then um, since you have, sorry, uh, let me just read verse 9 and 10 together. Right? Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, save or slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay? So you have put off the old man, so uh, do not lie to one another. And you actually put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge. Right? According to what? According to the image of he, of um, him who created him. Right. So he's saying, no, according to the image of God, you have been created. This new man that you have is created in the image of him. Right? That is why you're a new creation. You're a new man. Right. So... So we see that it's not a renovated or, you know, uh, some repair that has been made of the old creation. No, the new creation is created in the likeness of God. So he's saying you put on the new man who's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him, right, who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew. No, there's no difference. Like if, if you're a Greek, if you're a Jew and you, you are received Christ, then you become a new man in Christ. And, and that new man is renewed in knowledge and it's in the image of Christ. It's in the image of God. He's the one who created the new man. No, that's why he says, uh, image of him who created him. The first him refers to Christ and who created him. Right? Where there is Greek, neither Greek nor Jew. So he's talking about, you know, circumcised, uncircumcised, Jew, Greek, um, uh, you know, barbarian and Scythian and slave and free. So he's saying, you know, there's no differentiation because if someone is a new man, you, you know, if someone is a new, uh, I mean, if someone comes from all these backgrounds and is um, has received Christ, there is no difference. Right? There is no difference because they have become a new man in the spirit. And, uh, and that is who they are. So there is no difference. Okay. Verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. Okay. So he's now he's talking about these are some things that you need to put on. Okay. Earlier we saw, you know, you yourselves are to put off. Right. Verse 8 was about putting off. And uh, verse 12, you know, he's saying, Put on these things. Put on these qualities. Okay, uh, have these qualities in your life, or walk intentionally in these qualities. Okay, so as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, complaint against another, even as Christ forgave, so you also must do. Okay, so saying, okay, this is what you need to put on. Have all these qualities in your life. And even if you have a complaint against another person, as God in Christ forgave. Now, that's our standard and that's our example and role model for forgiveness. Okay, uh, as God in Christ forgave us, you know, so also we should forgive 
others. So he is our example. Okay, so he's our, the the. If you want to see, okay, where is that model or where is that role model, uh, whom I can follow as an example, you know, for forgiveness, it is Christ. Okay, so the ultimate role model. So as um, Christ forgave, so you also must do. Verse 14, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. You know, he's talking about putting on these qualities, patience, long-suffering, etc. Above all these things, put on love. Okay. And uh, he's talking, uh, okay, which is uh, verse 14, right? So he's talking about uh, the con God kind of love. Okay. He's talking about agape. And he's saying, this is this unconditional God kind of love. You need to have that in your life. Okay. Put on uh, agape, which is the bond of perfection, which means that uh, you know something is going to happen if you have that. It is it is going to do its work. You know, it's a bond. You know, it brings together. It holds together. It uh, fixes together. Unites. And it is the uniting factor uh, and bringing together of uh, perfection. You know, that perfection, the word that is used there, talks about completeness. Okay? So um, this agape love, when you put on, you know, that is the bond, that is the uniting, that unites, um, uh, uh, connects, and brings on that completeness. Okay, so... Above all, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Okay, okay. Verses fifteen onwards, fifteen to seventeen. Okay. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and spiritual uh, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Right? Whatever you do. So, um, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Um, Thing to which you were called in one body. Now, this peace of God, let it be ruling. One, you know, one one way of look uh, when you say rule and reign, right? It is to uh, allow the peace of God to to take take over, right? Uh, to reign. Uh, but also, it is uh, it means to to be the judge, right? To be the umpire to be the referee, right, in order to be able to decide or determine or discern, right? So let the peace of God do that discerning, uh, umpiring work in you, in your hearts. Okay? So that is, uh, that's what he's saying. Uh, let the peace of God do that work, do that umpiring work, uh, discern, discerning work in you, okay? Uh, okay, I'm just sharing the notes again. Okay. Um, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Okay. And, uh, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So we're saying, let the word of God stay, dwell. Okay. Let it not be a fleeting, temporary thing. He's talking about the peace, and then let the peace of God be the umpire, referee, you know, uh, enabling you to discern, enabling you to determine and choose. So let the peace of God be that. And um, the, the word of Christ, let it be, let it inhabit you, you know, let it have a permanent place in your hearts. Okay. So that's the important thing. Let the word of God not be seasonal. Let the word of God not have a temporary place, but let it be a dwelling place. 
let it dwell in you right so which means that we um give space in our hearts in our lives for the word of god okay uh in all areas of our lives and every day not just momentarily not just uh, for certain seasons right but let the word of god dwell in you and how should it dwell it said richly okay not in small measures but really abundantly richly right um so you're saying you know let that be your life you know you let you know that you open yourself to the word of god let the word of god let there be a rich deposit of the word of god uh let the word of god stay with you let the god of god stay in you you know let it not depart from your from you meaning uh, so when you when I say word you know it's all about the truth right the truth of god's word um the revelation from god's word the instruction you know and and what the word of god is uh, in instructing us to do or inviting us to do let that be in your heart okay now if if that is the case if it's in our heart then it influences our mind and it influences our imagination our words our choices our life okay so which is really the objective okay so uh, that will happen only if we allow or only if we if there is a rich deposit uh if we allow the word of god to dwell in us richly okay so richly in all wisdom see the overflow of this he's saying teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord now this is this is the overflow uh, this is the outworking uh, of the word of god dwelling in us richly right verse 17 and whatever you do in word which means in speech or deed in action do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him. Okay. so whatever you do do it in the name of the lord jesus okay. well, whatever you know it doesn't specify it just says in your life whatever you do and you do it in the name of the lord i right? do it uh, as uh, you know the authority of of his name do it based on you know what that name stands for and right? the authority the the uh, the power uh, and authority and what the name stands for you do it in his name right so he's calling us to a life of uh, you know life of holiness life of purity because we won't be indulging in fleshly acts in the name of jesus right there's no question of you know planning to sin and sinning and uh, doing it in his name right um well when you say in his name like in the place you know it's as if jesus is there and uh, a, a, and doing it uh, you know in his name by the authority that he gives us uh by the permission that he gives us right so how can we indulge in acts of flesh or acts of sin in the name of jesus so he's saying you know whatever you do either in your speech or in your lifestyle in your actions do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him okay and here are some instructions towards the end of this chapter here are some instructions um just like he gave in the earlier epistle like in ephesians he gives instructions to uh, you know husbands and wives and uh, to children and to fathers and so on and bond servants here uh, similarly he's talking to different uh, audiences different kinds of people right so he here says wives submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the lord husbands love your wives and do not be bitter towards them children obey your parents in the lord for this is well pleasing to the lord right? so obey your parents in the lord so saying you know uh, according to all that god 
wants and what God uh, wants you to be. Uh, obey, obey your parents. You know, if they are going to be you know, asking you to do something immoral or wicked, or, you know, no parent would do that. But if they are being bad role models and uh, you know putting pressure on you to do something that is not of the word, then then obviously you know we don't have to we don't have to obey. Right? So that's why it's very clear: obey your pa- parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Okay. Okay. Fathers, do not provoke your children. You know, don't don't irritate them, don't exasperate them. Um, because when we fathers, when you do that, they will become discouraged. Um, see the concern of the Lord, right? The concern of the Lord, the Lord's heart for marriage, the Lord's heart for family, the Lord's heart for children, the Lord's heart for you know employer-employee relationships, the Lord's heart for people, really. You no, know, it just comes through, right? Fathers, you know, specific instruction: don't discourage your children, don't provoke your children. Um, lest they become discouraged. Born servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, and not with eye service, but uh, as, you know, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. Okay. You know, a very valuable instruction. You know, to born servants or to people who are working under someone. Right, so obey your uh, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. These are your masters according to the flesh, you know, humanly, or in this human life, uh, life lifetime. You know, they are your masters. You're working for them. Um, you know, obey them, but not with eye service. Not with eye service, meaning only when they are, you know, watching. When you are being observed, uh, if you obey them, and when they are, when you are not being observed, if you do not obey them, then it's a waste. Right? They're saying not with eye service uh, only, right? As men pleasers, because if you're going to be doing something and obeying only when they see us, right? You're just doing things to please them, right? Not as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. So he's saying, you know, it's not like you're doing things for them, but you know, you fear God. How will your actions be? How will your work be if you're fearing God? Right? And that's what we see Joseph saying you know, in Potiphar's house in his conversation with Potiphar. He says, you know, this God, you know, how can I sin against God? Okay. So he's saying my action is actually something that, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a person who's working in somebody's house, he's saying, how can I sin against God? If I'm not doing the right thing, you know, it's not against, you know, the, the Potiphar will never know. Potiphar has given me, you know, everything, all responsibility, except the food that he eats. He does not know anything, everything I'm lo- looking after. But the thing is this, you know, how can I sin against God? Because he knows all things. He sees all things. So my action is actually you know, it's going to, uh, 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 you know, it's something that God sees. So therefore, my work, the, uh, the work that I do, is something that God sees, right? So so not as, uh, but in sincerity of God, fearing God, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Okay, so he's saying, this is your focus. Do it as to God, not to men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And he who has done wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. So that's how you know, we finish chapter 3 and uh, the instructions that he has given here. Okay. okay, so we'll take a 10-minute uh, break, and then uh, we'll come back.